Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday, August 22nd. I'm Hurricane Howe with your tropical weather update. A lot happening in the tropics today. We're excited to talk about it on the broadcast. So let's hop to it here. A lot going on today. Uh, here we are in the Atlantic. Let's go from east to west in the basin. We have two areas of possible tropical development, according to the National Hurricane Center, one at 50 percent, one at 20 percent. Tropical storm Gert has weakened now into a tropical depression. We expected that. Tropical storm Franklin holding on. Maximum sustained winds around 50 miles an hour. It will bring flooding rain to Hispaniola and Puerto Rico maybe dissipate north of the islands or as it crosses the islands and then possibly reinvent itself out there in the Atlantic. But the big story today, Tropical Storm Harold has formed overnight, moving quickly towards the Texas-Mexico border there to the north west northwest at 18 miles an hour. Maximum sustained winds, 45 miles an hour. And we'll be talking a lot about Harold today on the broadcast. Here's the uh, current center of circulation for Harold there, where the white dot is. And look at the wind field there. And that's pretty normal that the wind field spreads to the right, kind of of the center as it's tracking from east to west there. Those are tropical storm force winds in excess of 39 miles an hour. You can see there along the coast where we have um, where we have dark blue, it is a tropical storm warning. So we're expecting a tropical storm force winds in those areas. And we have a tropical storm watch there along the central Texas coast. So this storm is moving at a pretty quick pace to the west northwest at 18. The average movement of a tropical cyclone in this part of the world would be around 12 miles an hour. So this is moving pretty fast. And that wind field will come on shore this morning there in south Texas. Here's the probability of tropical storm force winds. And again, we can see some areas there getting in the red. So more than 70% chance there in some parts of South Texas. And as we said on the broadcast last night, South Texas is very susceptible to wind impacts. We had Barry Goldsmith on the National Tropical Weather Conference. He's with the National Weather Service in Brownsville, and he talked about how South Texas is really susceptible to wind impacts on the built environment. So even though we're not looking at hurricane force winds, we're looking at tropical storm force winds, we can expect some impacts down there for our friends in South Texas. What about the rain here? So generally we're expecting a lot of dark greens there in South Texas. On the legend here, that's two to four inches of rain, really near and south of Corpus Christi, down to the valley and going all the way over to Laredo. And then into Mexico, we see some areas with four to six. But keep in mind, this is a generalized rainfall map. Tropical rains tend to train a lot. We get these really intense cells of thunderstorms. And so this is a generalized precipitation map. When we see widespread two to four inches of rain from a tropical storm, you got to expect some areas that where they see the training and these heavier cells could see six, seven, eight inches of rain. If that's coming in a short amount of time, we could see some flash flooding, especially much of central and south Texas has been under drought. Where we get that hard pan soil, you just dump tons of rain in a short amount of time. It's going to run off really quickly. And so there is a flood concern there in south Texas today. So those, that map there here was, was showing, uh, you know, really the heavier rain, more than one inch is in light green, more than... Uh, two inches in the dark green. It looks as if there's going to be no rain in, the, in Matagorda Bay up through Houston, Galveston. That's not really the case. And this is a radar that was taken this morning. You can see the big rain field down here in uh, the central Texas coast. But farther north, we do see these individual cells that are generally moving from east to west. Here in Galveston Island, we were woken up by this cell right here that moved in around 520 this morning. We had a few claps of thunder on Galveston Island with a heavy downpour or two and, you know, much needed. We've been in extreme drought here along the upper Texas coast. In general, getting into the Houston-Galveston corridor over to Bolivar, I think we may see two or three of these showers that'll be a quick heavy downpour generally on Tuesday morning. And I think that might be it. Again, we wanted more rain, but at least some areas will pick up maybe a quarter inch of rain, a lot of areas less than that as we get into the upper Texas coast. The bigger story here is this big rain environment moving more towards the central and south Texas coast. So again, beautiful sunrise here in Galveston Island, not just because of seeing yellows, oranges, and reds, but actually seeing a puddle. That was the first measurable rain here in Galveston Island this month, if you can believe it. It's already August 22nd, first time we had measurable rain here on the island. Y'all also uh, check this out. This was coastal flooding in Galveston Island this morning. So we had an east wind here. This camera is pointed directly into the wind. We had an east wind 
around 15 to 20 miles an hour. And look at how high the salt water is on the beach. Just a reminder at how efficient the upper Texas coast is at developing storm surge. And that's in part because of how shallow it is. You don't need a very strong or very big wind field offshore to all of a sudden be pushing salt water way up on your beach. This is a 10, this is a 15 to 20 mile an hour sustained east wind for more than 12 hours in Galveston Island. And look at how, how short the beach was this morning. So just a reminder, y'all, it doesn't take much to get a lot of coastal flooding along the Texas coast. Well, y'all, we want to end the broadcast this morning. I just want to do a short one. You know how I am with models. I'm uh, very, you know, very skeptical of models out beyond about a week. But look at this. This is interesting. This is next Monday evening. And this is a Euro model, which tends to be a little more conservative in my view than the GFS or American model. This is getting out to next Monday evening. And we see either the remnants of Franklin or what may be Franklin reinventing itself early next week, possibly off the Carolinas coast. But look at this. This is an interesting feature. Actually, uh, something trying to spin up there near the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula next Monday evening. This according to the Euro model. Uh, again, it, it may or may not happen, but the Euro model tends to be more conservative. I get concerned whenever I see something like this within a week or so. And th this is right at that one week uh, boundary. This model was run last Monday, yesterday evening, Monday evening. So this is looking out really exactly seven days into the future. Shows that something may form there early next week. And then uh, that, that model run progresses to bring that into the Eastern Gulf. Y'all, be very careful with this, though. This is looking out next Wednesday evening. Again, that's really eight days from now, really eight and a half days from now. Uh, it, it's something you don't want to look at this and take it too literally. But just the big picture here is that we could see something form an impact in the Gulf next week. When we get beyond a week, we should expect some shifts in the model to model run. So the big picture here is potentially we could see something in the Gulf next week. It's too early to tell. Tell. It's too early to look at specifics, but when I see the Euro model showing something like this, and again, I never look out beyond 10 days, uh, it, it's just something of interest to note that we could possibly see something in the Gulf next week. Y'all, that's it. Thanks for coming with me on the broadcast today. I'll try to be with you six days a week around 7.30 a.m. Central. Again, the big story today, Tropical Storm Harold has formed. Amazing how we're moving along. I believe that's the eighth named storm of the season. We've had four in the last two days. Things are getting very busy. Again, we're in the most active part of the Atlantic tropical season. We should expect a lot of activity over the upcoming weeks. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the, in the comments below in this broadcast. Again, I'll be with you tomorrow morning to look at what's happening. And again, we'll look at a possible area of development in the Gulf of Mexico next week. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Everyone have a great Tuesday. This is Hurricane Hal signing off from Galveston, Texas.